Hey guys, I'm Gaming with you, and this is XCOM Enemy Unknown. This is going to be a hopefully a pretty short video. I'm just going to kind of review the game. Can't do a gameplay on it right now. Too many games going on. I would love to though. That may give you a hint as far as this review. Uh, I don't know how good the frame rate's going to be on this record. Let's just give it a shot. Okay, so for this purpose, I'm just going to jump into a nice, easy, normal game. Except now, if you're unfamiliar with the XCOM, excuse me, franchise. It started, jeez, like, kind of the dawn of, like, computer gaming getting big. It's not as old as, like, Doom and Quake and that stuff. But it's an old game. It's, uh, originally was, you know, smaller sprites. It was isometric, I guess is the word. Third-person point of view. It's a tactical strategy game. But we're going to skip the video, sorry. You can watch the videos online if you want to first thing we need to do is pick a base. So each different country or continent you choose gives you different bonuses. So it's strategic from the get-go. Um, you can unlock the bonuses of other continents by deploying enough satellites in their area, but it can take some time. Now some, like South America, you can get quickly. South America has a very good bonus to start with though. Or you could try to unlock it quickly, but it's tougher than you might think. Africa is a popular one, all in. 30% more funding, that's good for starting out. Money is always tight. Um, Asia's probably one of the worst, but it's a big place, and having your base there does help keep the risk down there. Europe is kind of a weak one too. North America does have a decent one. Aircraft and weapons, 50% less to purchase, build, and maintain. Actually, I'm lying. Um, Asia does have a half decent thing because the officer training school, but in the foundry are actually, Asia's pretty good. Europe and North America are garbage. Africa and South America, in my opinion, are the two best to start. Just for our purposes, we're just going to start with Africa. Now, I don't think Africa helps you out too much Listen if you up. don't have anything to survive to the, the, uh, for the next first month. I don't think you get starting bonus money. Up a local so, each mission will start with this kind of like area. briefing, we give you an idea of what you're doing. They're kind of generic, files. but objective. Sweep the site, identify threats, neutralize hostile targets and go. I don't know if I'm on tutorial. I hope this isn't the tutorial mission. Please don't, don't be the tutorial mission. I don't think it is. Tutorial mission's fine though. The tutorial's great in this game. Strike one. This is it introduces you pretty quickly. You free to engage all okay, so in the this don't is your main mode in the game. This is the battlefield. Now you can see I have a unit here selected. It shows their health bar over them and what kind of cover they're receiving. As you can see, it's very intuitive. So, the area in green is all the area he can move to. He has two actions, um, two move actions per turn, and he can only move once before he fires. Or he, if he fires, he cannot move at all unless they unlock special abilities. So, you know, you want to have good cover. So, when the shield is full, it's full cover. When it's half, it's half cover. If there's no shield on that facing, then it's no cover. So, for example, if I move him here, you can see this uh, blue square. He would have cover facing back towards where he ran from, but nothing in front of him. The enemies are going to be down away from us, so I would like to have him have full cover, but I want to scout a little bit, so we're going to run up here. Now, he hasn't unlocked any vision of any enemies yet, but he could move again if he wanted to. So he could move anywhere up in the yellow, and this is a grid-based system. It's just the grid, the lines actually are smooth so it makes it not look as grid based but it's apparent. So he can move here and have some decent half cover on two different sides but he wouldn't be able to take a shot or anything so what we want to do is I'm going to set him into what's called overwatch. Overwatch means he'll take a shot on anything that comes in range that he sees it's going to be at a reduced accuracy uh, but he will try to shoot anything he that moves while he's in overwatch so during the enemy turn. Oops, wrong button. Now also, on your turn, uh, you take all of your unit's turns. So we get to move them all. Now these guys aren't going to have as many good cover places. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy up here in half cover. Now my units are all the same right now. They're just base units. As they unlock, there's four different classes. There's the support class, which has some abilities to heal using a medic kit. He's not a spellcaster. There's also the assault, which is kind of like your uh, guy who charges in with a shotgun and tries to blow stuff up. 
but he puts himself in harm's way. There's the Heavy, who uses a rocket launcher as one of his abilities, um, which is kind of a AoE blow stuff up thing. Okay, so those guys moved, but they were out of range for my guys to take their Overwatch shots. But we know where some aliens are. And if you can hear my chair squeaking, it sucks. I hate my chair. So what we're going to do is we know they're up on that ramp. So we're going to have this guy move over here. Alien life oh, so you know we see aliens. We're witnessing something never before seen in recorded history. So whenever you spot aliens, they get a chance to like all run and hide. It's really annoying in a lot of ways. But we're going to have him stand here, go into Overwatch. Aliens moved further up and they moved over off the ledge. So I kind of want to get these guys over here, so I'm just going to have this guy dash over behind this thing. Now he won't be able to take a shot, but he's over there to help be defensive. And then we're going to just rotate these guys out too. He can make it. So good planning on my part. Get this guy over here, and then this guy's going to move to where the first guy we moved was. So combat, um, it feels good, in my opinion. This combat system is very good. And the unlocks and stuff, my impression of the game is that it seems like, oh, when this happens, it's kind of like you hear noise. When you can't see them, it'll give you clues as to where the enemy is, so that way you know which direction to start heading. Because if you just go charging straight out into the battlefield, on easier difficulties you'll do okay. But on the harder difficulties, you're just going to lose all your troops. The enemies hit harder, on average, and are more accurate and critical more than you. So they will kill your troops quickly, especially early on. Now you also may have just noticed the terrain just got blown up, so this guy's cover is gone. They're using plasma weapons, and they just blew his stuff up. So now some many enemies who are back there, who are patrolling, have came out, are moving around, and now they're, unfortunately for me, kind of flanking me. So, you know, I have to decide, split my troops up, or go both ways. First thing I gotta deal with is this guy has no cover anymore. He has ha uh, half cover, and he doesn't really have any good options unless I get him to where this guy is. So let's start with these guys who are furthest down. So she could get full cover there, get good vision. I'm not sure about that though. I think I'm just gonna oh that's no vision. Um yeah, we're gonna go ahead and go here. Now she has vision. I can take a shot on this guy. She's considered to be flanking him. And he does have half cover to her, I think. No, he has no cover to her. So that's better than taking an overwatch shot. So we're gonna go ahead and try to take it. So it's only a 45% chance to hit, but that's good enough for me. I could have thrown a grenade and killed them both for sure, but I didn't think that was my best bet since I have better cover than they do. Okay, and you do collect the alien weapons. equipment, bodies, you know, if you can live capture them to research, just like in the old games. It's very similar. We're going to run this guy over here. Go ahead and set him in Overwatch. This guy we're going to move to the corner back here. Now he's got a shot. Now both of my guys have full cover against this alien, so even if he survived, they would be in good position against him. Now this guy, as I said, he's in bad position. We got these guys over here, and I think the best thing to do is just to kind of move my squad as a unit around this way. The way this game does work too is high ground is beneficial. The higher you are in elevation compared to the enemy, the better your chance to hit and the better your defense. Defense is how hard it is to hit you. So it's a significant advantage to be on high ground if you get even a guy with a shotgun up on a rooftop, like two stories above some alien. If that alien's within range, he's going to have a very good shot to hit it if it's on ground level. So, this is bad for me. That guy, that purple on his head means he's been mind melded with another um, sectoid. Advanced strategies, you killed the one who is mind melding him, and they both die. But, he's got improved hit, and improved crit, and improved hit points right now. So, he's a scary mofo. So, I could throw a grenade. It's a guaranteed 3 damage to anything in its burst. We'll just show kind of what it looks like. This is the UI. But your characters aren't... Superman, you can notice this guy can't throw for anything. He can't even hit that guy. So that's not what we're going to do. Let's exit out of that. 
I think what we're going to do is I could run up to here and take a shot on him. I'm not guaranteed to kill him, though. So that seems bad overall. So let's start with this guy. What I want to do is I'm going to move him to this back corner. We know an alien jumped down there. We just haven't seen him yet, so we want to kind of work our way over. We're going to move her to this corner. And this is how the game's played. It may seem to some people slow, but it's a strategy game. You gotta, you gotta move methodically if you want to survive. Now what I'm gonna do with this guy is this alien has no chance to run all the way up at me and shoot me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something a little different. Let's rotate our camera. I'm gonna go ahead and move him. And yeah, we're gonna go right here and overwatch. This kind of forces the alien to move to me if he wants to fight. I think the graphics in this game look beautiful. Like, not super beautiful, but I mean, for an XCOP game, I thought they were they were a little cartoonish. But I wasn't a fan initially. The m oh, this position may be worse than I thought. I should have went around the corner. Because he can shoot me from there, can't he? Yep, I didn't think he was going to be able to move far enough to shoot. He missed, thank goodness. Um... I didn't like him at first because I thought they were some of the animations were a little cartoonish for for me, but in the end, after actually playing it a bit, I really appreciate the graphics. They feel good. They feel like XCOM. Look, that guy when he shot, he blew out the side of this barrel, so now we can actually go in it, which is what we're going to do. We're going to send this chick inside the barrel um, and put her back in Overwatch. This guy, on the other hand, um, we'll decide what to do with him in a minute. I need to deal with this guy, though. And I don't have a lot of good options. My best option, I think, is to rotate around the corner and overwatch. Now, for her, she's not in good position either. So what I want to do is I'm going to move her here and overwatch. So we're playing this really safe. I've been playing on Iron Man difficulty on uh, Impossible, and you have to move perfectly every round or else you're pretty much boned. Like, this is a horrible position to move the guy, but I just did it. So we're going to kill a couple more aliens, and then I will uh, cut, and we'll come back to the base world overview screen and show that off. So he's still super, and he's shooting at my guy. He's missed again. We're getting very lucky, actually. Even though I have full cover, I wouldn't have been shocked if he hit me. We still got to figure out a way to deal with him. If you notice, he probably put a hole in this barrel. He did? Not. Oh, he did. So someone could go in there, actually. But that would be a full run. Full on run. I don't want to do that. Would this be full cover? I kind of like this position right here. It's full cover on two sides. So we're gonna move there. We're just trying to get into some good position. Alright, we need to move this guy up. There's no good place to move him, unfortunately. Either of these people. It's actually a very difficult spot to move them through. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and go here. This is very dangerous. I'm out in the open. He has view on an alien. It's this one. That's a 45% chance. I think I'm going to go ahead and take a shot. Because he's far enough away, he shouldn't get hit. I'm going to go ahead and move her out to half cover. I don't like this, but we need to make progress. And with him, I'm going to do the same thing. Half cover it up. Now we know there's one alien left up here, I believe. Now this alien, he shouldn't have a good shot on anyone. He really needs to move. He should move up to like here and not shoot. Oh my, oh I hit him. Three damage. See that's one of the problems too, is right now I can't guarantee I'm gonna kill that guy when he has four hit points, so that's why I don't wanna charge up and shoot at him. Our full cover has been giving us a big advantage. Now he's exposed though. He doesn't have good cover, so I might just run up and blast him. I think that's our play. Uh oh, now you can see the one that he's mind melted with. 
It's a 45%. If I hit this guy, I kill them both. Could I possibly grenade? No. We're going to go ahead and do it, just see if we can hit the shot. So we're going to go for the shot. Now, I could almost guarantee kill him. I'm not going to worry about him, though. We're going to try to hit this guy. And we missed. So, we're... No, that's not off. good. So, we'll see if we can... Can this guy run up far enough to grenade? I think he can. One thing I don't like, though, is if you move and you don't get as much distance as you need, you're boned. Alright, so we got plenty of space to go ahead and grenade this guy out. This is a guaranteed kill, so we'll go ahead and do it. Bing! Commander, you may want to instruct yeah, yeah, your yeah. men to exercise restraint when using explosives. I don't care about restraint, woman. While certainly effective at killing aliens, they also destroy the artifacts we're hoping to recover from Hoping to recover. Just something to consider. So we're gonna just move her there. And can I get up here? Not quite. I'm gonna go ahead and run all the way up here. And maybe I can finish this battle quickly. It's raining death over here. Already gonna be a longer episode than I planned. Go figure. It always happens. I love the destructible terrain. Almost everything can blow up. If you hit a car, it'll blow up. Like it'll light on fire blow up. Alright, so we're gonna give this guy a shot here. Oh. No targets. Overwatch it is. So this guy is my advanced scout. Uh, so I've had trouble on this map before with elevation. I'll just see how it goes. Move this guy up. And reload his weapon. Oh no. I didn't realize his weapon was empty. Move her up. Go ahead and overwatch her. We're going to move this guy here. And overwatch. And alien turn. This may be the only alien left. Maybe that one who jumped down climbed back up, but I don't think so. Oh. Whoa. He almost got me. I thought he hit him in the head. So he could see me, but I couldn't see him. That's unfair. Um, 45%. We'll do it again. Got him. Boom. Oh, that is it. Okay. I thought one jumped down up there, but I guess I was wrong. Typically these guys spawn in pairs or squads of three. So that's the wrap-up screen. Got excellence on both. There's different kinds of missions. There's... Uh, and then this is the world overview. We're just flying back to our headquarters. There's sweet little cutscenes. I'm not going to show those at the moment. You can see those on your own. This is the level up screen. After missions, you can level up. So this guy is a support. We're going to have one of each class here. So supports have abilities like heal and smoke grenades, which smoke grenades provide a bonus defense. So anyone can use a med kit, but the supports will be able to use them more effectively and multiple times. Heavies can use rockets, like I talked about before. And then there's the sniper class. We didn't talk about that. Class serves as our front line. This is our assault. They're the, the front first line. They charge. The fight, and the last one's out. So, and then this guy, Dimitri, he's going to be a sniper. He just didn't level up. Now, you don't know what your rookies are going to be, but at the start of the game, you get one of each class. Commander, Guaranteed. The the recovered artifacts are being unloaded, your cover stuff, you can research it. Now, shoot it. Every month you have a council report that's going to tell you how well you're doing. You have money, it shows you how much money you're going to make. And this is your base, actually. So you have different places in here. And though you can look around it, it's actually, for the most part, irrelevant to do. You just use these little tabs at the top. So other than this one right here with this awesome globe, which is your mission control, this like that's about the only room I ever click on, other than the fact that you can click on your barracks to look at your troops and to train your troops to unlock squad members. You can have up to six. Now I want to show something that I highly believe is going to happen. If you look at this soldier, we have four soldier classes. I expect expansions or Commander, even Steam Workshop Commander, to allow us to create more lab. classes. So if you look at his loadout, 
they have room for five slots and there's an one class the support that does get five slots eventually but if you look at their abilities notice there's a one in the middle in the first and at major you get you, know, you always have to take a certain skill that's class specific but if you look at these others all the others there's two there's definitely room to have three options here and I actually think there's room to have four options at every level Commander to the research and labs. The, to the research labs. classes are very generic. I could see us having more options, such as some kind of um, grenade class, which would be kind of overpowered. But I could see more differentiation in classes and more specialities, like the Psy and uh, the Mind abilities in this game, just like there were in others. They're very important to this, but I could see an expansion. I could see an expansion for one to the game. I'm not going to spoil anything about the storyline, but to the research labs. Uh, yeah, Commander they're trying to tell me, you know, labs. move forward with the game. So then there's engineering, uh. Doctor Shen from uh, Lost. And engineering, you can build stuff. Right now, we can't really build much. You can build ships. You can build stuff you research. All kinds of stuff. Facilities. We this is how you build up your base. Up here, so really it's a grid. It's cool. We're going to have to start and I'm going to call it an episode here, guys. Uh, this has been my review of XCOM Enemy the Unknown. The, the game, cost. I would say, is a solid 9.5 out of 10. The game is excellent. Anyone who enjoys strategy, RPG, or tactic games could find enjoyment in this game. It's $50 on Steam right now, but I actually think it's worth every penny. This is probably the best game I've played this year. Commander I love Crusader Kings. Lives. Commander this game's quicker and more fun, in my opinion, more rewarding. It's also very challenging if you put it on the hard setting. It's, it is actually nearly impossible. It is very difficult. And yeah, right now, if I were a reviewer, this would be my vote for the game of the year right now. It, I'm sure that the one that's got the most press so far for game of the year is going to end up being WoW, uh, Mr. Pandaria, just because of the amount of people who play it. But I think Borderlands 2 and XCOM are actually the two best games released so far this year. Better than Diablo 3, better than Torchlight, better than any other game. I think these are the two best games right now, and they just came out, what, the same day or back-to-back -back days or weeks? Pretty awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Onk Gaming, out!